This is the local airport's terminal runway, where planes take off and land. Both landing and taking off cannot be achieved without the help of a marshaller. They are usually dressed in orange jackets. These air marshalers are set to carry out their duties, directing the pilot. This is very crucial for proper parking of the plane. How is the work done? Their work is to assist pilots in safe parking or safe positioning of aircrafts in order to avoid collision of uh, aircraft wind tips or tail or engines talking anything. So much as there to assist the pilot. We use this reflective jacket, orange. So if I is coming afar, you see plenty of people in the airside with green and other colors, but this orange is mainly for marshalers. So if pilot is coming from afar, you know that's the marshaler. You'll be maybe like two, three or one of that. But the person that raises hand like this, the pilot knows, yes, that's the person to pack me and that's the bay I'm to pack. This work cannot be achieved without certain equipment. It's air mop. We used to protect ourselves from the aircraft noise. So in order not to damage our ears, so we use this to protect it. On this one is marshalling torch. So we use it in the daytime and as well in the night time. It's, there's, there's battery inside. I can own it in the night. Or the pilot, if I raise up, the pilot will know that yes, I'm there to park him. First, you go for training first. The training, the first one is three weeks. Now go for another one. Like three weeks again, finish. You're not allowed to marshal. And before even you marshal, the, the experienced people on the field, they will still guide you, put it through for you to acquire the practical experience before you start marshaling the aircraft. Victor KJ and others are air marshalers and they talk about their job. Uh, before now, I don't have uh, eyes in aviation, but accidentally I just find myself and I flew along. It's a wonderful experience. The science is an interesting job. It's an interesting job. The science and the, it gets to expose you to know your environment and to know flying experience is, is a wonderful one. It's a wonderful one. So that makes the job interesting and, and enticing. So we, have, we work for six, six hours. If we are on Monday, we work from, from seven to one. If we are on afternoon, we work from three to seven. And if we are on night, we work from seven to the next day. Then we go on two days off. How does one become an air marshaler? What professional training qualifies you to become one? There is nowhere again in Nigeria where marshalling is being taught in school. So they come in and they are trained. The train fan trains them, and I think in Katsu does the training, but presently it's fan that arranges their training. And if I anytime you have um, audits, that's uh, when we have either from NCA. ICAO, ACR, or APEX, they want to see their training records, they want to see their medical record. They want to, they are one group of people that are really taken care of in the sense that you know because what they do is safety related and any mistake from them 
can be very costly. On this runway, there are different colors of marking lines for different purposes. The white line is for vehicular movement, red is called the safety line, and the yellow lines mark where the planes move and maneuver. That's not all. This demarcated portion is where an aircraft parks. It's made of concrete and can carry the weight of the plane. Officials of the America Transportation Security Administration, the TSA, have concluded a security assessment of the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, MMIA. They say they are satisfied with the level of compliance with the International Civil Aviation Organization standard and recommended practices in the airport. The team said it was highly impressed with the corrective action plans put in place by the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria in respect of the few opened items. They commended the authority's consistency and methodology on the implementation of TSA applicable security procedures, which was of ICAO standards. According to them, this accomplishment is a reflection of sufficient training provided for the staff and coupled with effective regulatory oversight of the industry by the NCAA. Other areas of the airport examined in the course of the assessment include airport operations and standards, quality control, access control point, passenger and baggage screening, screening equipment, airport contingency plan and airport security program. And the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, the NCAA, has lifted the temporary suspension of the operations of the Bristol helicopter Sikorsky S-76 aircraft in the country. External Communications Manager Julie King said the return of the Sikorsky S-76 aircraft to flight operations followed completion of the NCAA's comprehensive operational audit. Julie King adds that Bristol had concluded a number of return to service safety activities with flight crews, engineers and other service employees, clients and key stakeholders. Bristol Helicopters aircraft type Sakoski S-76C was suspended from further operations in Nigeria after several mishaps involving the aircraft type in the country. Strong. A former Director General of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, Dr. Harold Demurin, has emphasized that the greatest challenge facing the regulatory body is political interference to safety regulation. He said this while speaking at the quarter one breakfast meeting organized by the Aviation Roundtable Safety Initiative. Mr. Demirin says there is a need for clarity on the roles of government, public enterprise, operators and regulators in ensuring a proper and effective enforcement of aviation safety regulations in Nigeria. According to him, there must be a complete focus on the need to strengthen ICAO and IATA safety standard codes and conventions for aircraft operations and maintenance at all times, with very little attention on political and economic considerations. 
urgent steps must be taken to invoke appropriate aviation safety laws to check the preponderance of aging, technical and human resources, inadequate technical staff, training facilities and poor maintenance of existing infrastructure in the industry. And outside Nigerian shores, a solar-powered plane attempting to circumnavigate the globe made a test flight over Hawaii as it prepares to continue on its record-breaking journey. The aircraft called the Solar Impulse 2 was grounded on the island of Oahu last year July as a result of battery damage during the plane's record 118-hour Trans-Pacific flight from Japan to Hawaii. The Solar Impulse 2 batteries store energy from the sun during daylight hours to keep the aircraft powered overnight, allowing it to remain aloft around the clock on extreme long-distance flights. The batteries became overheated during the plane's initial ascent after takeoff in June 2015 from Nagoya, Japan, en route to Hawaii. The Solar Impulse 2 is the first aircraft to fly day and night without any fuel. Pilot Andre Boschberg's 120-hour voyage shattered the 76-hour record for non-stop flight by late American adventurer Steve Fawcett in 2006 on the Virgin Atlantic Global Flyer. And it's the second anniversary of the missing Malaysia Airlines MH370 and families of the victims stage a protest in Beijing. The family members carrying placards with different slogans demanded that Malaysia safely return their relatives. Some of the relatives believe their loved ones are still alive. The plane disappeared on March the 8th, 2014 and route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing with 239 passengers and crew on board, most of them Chinese in one of the world's greatest aviation mysteries. After two years, only a piece of wing known as a flaperon discovered in July last year has been confirmed by authorities to belong to the missing boy. I hope you enjoyed the program. Feel free to share your views with us. We'll be glad to receive them. This is where we draw the curtain on today's edition of the program. Thanks for staying with us.